Hi, I'm Warren. I'm here today to share a few things I love about using OBS for teaching. First off, you can use your phone's camera to record yourself or to stream to Zoom. And your phone typically has a much better camera than your laptop or your monitor. Uh, I just mentioned you can stream to Zoom uh, through OBS and you can use effects like these while you're streaming, uh, say talking to your students. And one of those effects is the ability to use text while you are recording. And then finally, if you're willing to invest in a green screen, you can interact with things on your desktop, uh, PowerPoints, uh, documents from Word, your browser, uh, perhaps with your Moodle page up there, um, while you're using OBS to stream or record. And I'll talk about that in a bit. These go from the easiest to the most difficult, technically. I'd say start with something easy, see how you like it, and um, if you want to advance and you're finding the time it takes to learn something, uh, the payoff is worth it, then just keep advancing, and soon you'll be sharing tips with me. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It's free. You can download it for a variety of different platforms. Uh, you can find tons of great tutorials about how to use it and how to use various plugins um, for the software. The one thing I'd say if you're looking for a tutorial is don't look for something by a college professor. Uh, look for something by a gamer or someone else who uses this all the time. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff out there. I'd like to talk a little bit now about what I like about it specifically for education. Okay, using your phone's camera. One of the things I most like about OBS is it allows you to use the vastly superior camera you're likely to have on your phone. Uh, and this is true even of the selfie cam, which is what I'm using to record this right now. Uh, a lot of phones now have auto white balance. Uh, if you know what that is, it has auto focus, so I can get close or far away, and it's going to keep me in focus. You can also adjust things in the um, iPhone plugin, and I assume it's the same for Android phones, although I have not tested that plugin. Um, but in the plugin itself, I can adjust things like the brightness and the darkness. I can also adjust the white balance, which particularly if you're like me, a Caucasian with fairly pasty skin, it allows you to inject a little blood and vitality into your image. And in general, this uh, supports the principle that you want to make adjustments as far upstream as you can in the device itself and not in post-processing. So what that means in terms of using OBS is if you can adjust things in your phone's camera the way I just did, it's much easier. You can get a much better result than adjusting things downstream in all of the wonderful filters that OBS has. And pretty much you name it, OBS can do it. But it's nice that you can dial things in on the camera and then make finer adjustments later on. Secondly, anything you might do while you're recording a video, you can also do live by sending it to Zoom. Um, there are a few little steps you need to take for this, but I've had wonderful results, and it, it took surprisingly less time than I thought. So it's nice to be able to use effects like text um, while you're on a Zoom call, even if it's only a kind of text to ask someone to unmute their microphone. For text, OBS has some nice built-in features. So for something like this with Warren Hedges, you know, my name and my institution, I can do that. I have that semi-opaque background behind it. Uh, I've also figured out, I figured this out on my own. There's probably a tutorial out there on how to do this, uh, but how to use elements from a PowerPoint presentation in OBS. So let me turn off the chroma key filter, which is what you use for green screens. And you can see how I've been doing this. I just created a green background for my PowerPoint presentation. And then I use the same filter you would use for recording which a green screen, which I am actually doing. There's one behind me, which I'll talk about in a moment. And that way I can have all of the effects I'd have in a PowerPoint 
uh, occur on screen. Just about anything you can do on your desktop can be sent to OBS. Uh, so whether that's a PowerPoint display like I've been using, if you want to have your Moodle page for a class behind you and point to specific things and such, if you want to have a student paper where you're commenting on a passage, you can do it. Um, you could be in a little box here. You can see I've got a box I've resized depending on how large or small I'm going to be. That could be with just the background you use for your other Zoom calls behind you uh, or your other recordings from your office. I like having a green screen. Uh, you can experiment with this without actually purchasing a green screen. Try hanging a sheet behind you. It can be any bright color that's uniform and contrasts with whatever you happen to like to wear. Um, green is often used for technical reasons, but I started with just a sheet and then when I wanted to get an actual green screen, it was surprisingly affordable. It's just some green fabric. I made a frame out of wood and stretched it over that. Um, but if you're interested in this, I have some links as always in the description of the video that will help walk you through it. So those are some things I love about OBS. As I mentioned before, I will have um, links to tutorials I have found helpful in the description of this video, but by all means, search around. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there. It's coming up all the time, and these are the people who are experts, who do this day in and day out, and from whom you can learn the most quickly. And finally, I'd say, as with anything else technical, mess around and see what works. I just figured this thing um, out about using a green background on PowerPoint so I can bring the animations in, and I'm still feeling quite proud of myself. So I hope you will have similar experiences if you take this up. Thank you.